Welcome back to the Mandarin Blueprint Podcast. I am here with Paul, who has kindly agreed to talk about his experiences on the Mandarin Blueprint Method video course. Um, but first, before we get into anything about the course, I thought I would just ask you, Paul, to introduce yourself and talk about what led you to wanting to learn uh, Chinese. Okay, uh, my name is Paul, and I've been interested in learning different languages um, since I hit my 20s, I've studied Portuguese, French, Spanish, Japanese, and uh, I eventually came to Chinese through my interest in Chinese medicine and Taoism. Mm. And I was kind of intimidated to learn it at first because it's supposed to be the hardest language to learn, quote unquote. But right. Yeah. But I think it's not that difficult, I found. And I've been surprised at how easily I've been able to do it through the Mandarin Blueprint program. Right, yeah, yeah. I think the Chinese, the the hardest parts about it are kind of in the beginning, but once you sort of establish your foundation, uh, you realize that most of the uh, the way the language is structured is actually quite logical. So, because uh, it's less, um, you know, English has so many different sources that sometimes, uh, you know, this, uh, root languages, you know, you've got uh, Nordic, you've got uh, Germanic, Latin, uh, mm -hmm. French, uh, there's all sorts of different root languages. So it can make the uh, sort of structures of the language and the grammar feel very um, all over the place sometimes, whereas Chinese is a lot more unified. So when it comes down to, um, you know, you, you see like a rule or, or a, a, a con there's a lot more consistency, let's put it that way. So you can have a when you see an exception to a rule, it's actually quite surprising. You're like, oh, wow, that's, an, you know, whereas in English, there's exceptions all over the place. The whole language is it's a language right. of exceptions. So, um, mm -hmm. so cool. That's, that's good to hear. So what, um, so when you, so you were interested in Taoism uh, and you're interested in, um, I'm sorry, you said Taoism and uh, <laughs> my, I, I forgot the other thing you said. Oh, uh, Chinese medicine a little and, bit. That's where I got my interest kind of started. Yeah, you know, my, just on a personal note, my opinion has really changed on Chinese traditional medicine. Uh, you know, when I first came to uh, China, I was very much, you know, of the camp of, you know, what do you mean Chinese medicine? Isn't medicine just medicine? And I, and I do think that there is, yeah. um, there's something to be said for that line of thinking, but I've sort of come to understand that Chinese traditional medicine is almost, it's almost better to think of it in more like, by analogy to nutritionism or like or sort of um, a nutritionist you know in the sense it's not exactly the same but there's sort of that type of it's more for preventative in nature it's meant to be like if you do these things then you can potentially uh, avoid uh you know feeling feeling ill at ease or just feel you know it's like don't use chinese traditional medicine right. for trauma you know if you're in a car accident use western medicine but like yeah. if you're uh yeah. trying to just you know you're you don't want to have uh, feel as ill at ease as much, you know, you can try some Chinese traditional medicine. So what, what got you interested in that in the first place? Well, I had a good buddy that was having a uh, bad pain and he went to an acupuncturist and it mm. worked wonders for him, took all the pain away. And he said, I'm going to bring you with me. So I went with him and I made friends with the acupuncturist, started talking to him. He introduced me to some reading material and I started taking a few classes from there and the interest just grew. Right, right. And is that what led to your interest in Taoism? Yeah, yeah. I figured I'm studying the medicine and we're getting a little bit of, you know, the yin and the yang and the Chinese cosmology. And if I want to learn the medicine, why don't I just go straight to the source and learn the Tao? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, being in Chengdu, we're very close to the uh, the birthplace of Taoism in uh, Qingcheng Shan. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been there many times. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, the Taoism is... Really that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Taoism is something that uh, I think has permeated the culture here in a way that's, you know, it's very, like, in many ways, it's in the language. You know, you'll see a lot of different, um, you know, sort of... Uh -huh. so, the idioms or just turns of phrase or even just words that you go, okay, well, this this in this word or in this idiom there's a concept that's sort of based in the the Taoist philosophy which is cool to see you know because i had this um uh, not i wouldn't say it was actually an argument but a sort of debate with a f american friend of mine who was sort of saying that uh you know Taoism no longer there's not that many Taoists, so how much of an influence does it really have on chinese culture and i was like well a big influence it's just because you, you know it's like saying uh you know imagine that 
you know, 20 years from now, the amount of Christians in America drops to say, I don't know, 20% or something. I'm not saying that'll happen, but like, let's just say, does that mean that the 80% who aren't Christian aren't affected by Christian, you know, uh, uh, sort of philosophy or Christian uh, belief? It's like, well, of course it still would be because it's like generations of culture will still affect the, um, you know, the descendants. So yeah. that's something I've noticed here a lot. So just out of curiosity, what have been your biggest sort of, uh, I'm genuinely just asking because I'm curious. What what uh what have been okay. your takeaways from your sort of not exactly just you're looking into Taoism and sort of what have you come to what wisdom have you taken away from that? I suppose. Oh man, how can you like uh, distill it and put it into a sound bite? Well, the eternal um, Tao, you can't explain it. <laughs> yeah. Then right. Not the eternal Tao. <laughs> well, I, basically, it's just about whether life is good or life is bad, it's going to change. So mm -hmm. if it's bad, don't worry. If it's good, don't get too attached and just harmonize with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's this not external path. things. Yeah, it's not external things that bring you to ruin, but it's just you letting yourself get jerked around by those things. And that's probably a more practical point that I could distill from it. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's something. I love that little parable of the Chinese farmer. Uh, where he's you know uh -huh. everything that happens oh, to him he just says people are like oh what good fortune oh what bad fortune every time he's just like maybe yeah we'll see yeah yeah uh, that's an awesome parable yeah yeah um cool so let's um so let's suppose that you successfully learn chinese and you're able to operate fluently and literately in the language uh what will you do with it well uh I have fun with it for one thing. That's mostly why I'm learning is just for fun because it's mm. something I enjoy doing. Nice. But, you know, I, I, I might like to use it professionally. I imagine your company would grow and maybe I'll work for Mandarin Blueprint in the future uh -huh. or find some other company to work for. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, uh -huh. that sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, that That's, you know, it's I like that attitude because... Um, you know, the, I think the truth of the matter is that whatever your goal is at the beginning, uh, the main thing is, does it sustain you in continuing? Because uh, it's pretty unlikely that your original goal is going to necessarily uh, relate to what you end up using. But still, there's no right. doubt that adding that skill set to your, um, you know, resume is going to be something that you'll have use for in the future, what, whether it be, um, you know, directly like you got a job because of it or whether it's just because um you're able to meet new people uh who give you a connection or something like that you know there's there's all sorts of possibilities there so um that's you know it's if you're motivated by interest in the language and having fun in the language to begin with and then you're like well maybe it'll work out for something in the future uh then that's actually probably the best attitude to have right off the bat you know um mm -hmm. so cool nice so um let's see here Apart from that, um, so when you got into lo looking into learning Chinese, what was your process? So like, how did you approach it from the beginning? So, okay, I want to learn Chinese. And so what did you do at that point? Did you just do a Google, like learn Chinese online or something? Well, I had experience using the Pimsleur program for learning other languages. And I really liked that program. Nice. So I just started with Pimsleur. And then from there, I tried other apps. I tried Duolingual, FluentU. Um, I ordered books on Amazon. I started memorizing HSK lists and that kind of thing. Just, I tried a bunch of different approaches, just trying to see what fit me the best and what worked the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How, and so how did you experience, um, I, I, I've, we definitely heard a lot of people mention Duolingo, uh, seeing that first oh. before heading to us. And then uh, uh, we both used Pimsleur at one point, Luke a bit more than I did. Uh, for me, it, it, it drove me crazy. I, I didn't work for my oh. personality as well. Although it did, okay. it did help, you know, it, it had its, uh, but like, you know, I couldn't get through it. I just, every day I was just like, this is the most boring part of my day because <laughs> it's just a listen and repeat huh. overall. But, you know, um, what did you think of uh, Fluent U? I haven't, I haven't heard too many people um, on our course mention doing that. What was your experience with Fluent U? I like it better than Duolingo because it shows you a lot of videos and then, if you like certain videos, you'll just watch them over and over again and get exposed to certain vocabulary. 
what you guys call a top down approach. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they, they also have SRS within their program, the spaced repetition software. Um, but it's not quite as good as the Anki that I'm doing through Mandarin blueprint. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The SRS. I mean, I like it, but not perfect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anki is, um, you know, well, uh, we, Anki is the most customizable SRS software out there, which is great. Um, you know, we, yeah. uh, it also sort of drives us crazy a little bit because you have to be, uh, at a certain, it has a pretty, um, high threshold of like sort of technological understanding to be able to use, which is frustrating. Uh -huh. You don't want that to be the thing that stops people from learning Chinese. And unfortunately for some people, it's like Anki is too much of a pain. Um, but it, you know, it's just, it depends on that. But like most people, you know, in, um, uh, you know, in a younger generation are fine with it, but still it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, it's like we, it, the love hate relationship we have with Anki is pretty, <laughs> pretty intense, but yeah, Anki right. is great overall. Um, so, right. Nice. So then how did you end up finding Mandarin Blueprint then? Uh, I saw it in a Facebook ad and I just went for it on a whim. It was on sale. So I just thought, okay, I'll try this one. I'm, uh, I guess I was a little dissatisfied with the progress I was making and with the method I was using. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know at the time what was wrong with it until I started doing Mandarin blueprint. Right. Right. So, so yeah. So tell me about that. How did that, um, sort of, what was it about when you started doing Mandarin blueprint, what was it about it that uh -huh. made you realize, okay, this is going to be different and work a little bit better. Well, I'd been doing, um, Pimsleur for about a year and a half. And when I first started your pronunciation course, I learned so many things that I didn't even pick up on with Pimsleur. If I would have continued Pimsleur for another two years, I don't know if I would have picked up on all the pronunciation tips that you guys give and how to go into the nuances of that. So that was right. the first thing I yeah, yeah, Luke does such a good job in that course. Uh, I was, you know, I learned a bunch of stuff from Luke when I was editing the videos. I was like, oh, this is a, you know, he did a great job. So that's, um, that's not surprising to hear. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. So you, so you saw the pronunciation mastery, you saw Luke's good uh, explanations for everything. And uh, then you were like, okay, so that's, that's mm -hmm. pretty, you know, I mean, the pronunciation course is something we're still very proud of when we made that, you know, maybe two and a half years ago now. Uh, and so that's great. Yeah. So then uh, you transitioned into the uh, phase one of the course with the character learning method. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously that yeah. is a little bit weird <laughs> if you're not used to uh, the, you know, nobody thinks I'm going to learn Chinese by imagining my, uh, my uncle in the bathroom, you know, shaving a ferret. <laughs> so what, um, yeah, it was unexpected. Yeah. So how did that, what was that experience like when you first started? Um, it didn't take me long. I did a few characters and I realized, okay, this is going to work. I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to be able to put in the minimal input to get out the uh, maximal output. Right. And it's before that I was like memorizing HSK lists and I would just read characters over and over and pronounce them over and over again and just do it through kind of rote memorization, mm -hmm. which... I guess it has its merits if you're a child in China and you have all your life to study and learn. But for me, I picked up on your guys' method being like something that you could use to learn characters a lot quicker and memorize them a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So like you got yeah. you picked up on it pretty quick and believed in it pretty quick, which is good. That's a very important yeah. element to it because oh, yeah. you know, skepticism, I totally, I, while I completely understand skepticism, it's like it does it can hold you back a little bit because you're like well you know what is this about why would i imagine all these people and places and whatever and so but the thing i always point out is that um if chinese only had 100 characters then i would agree that it's not worth it but like you know so it, if you figure it out say let's say it takes you 30 characters to feel like okay i understand how this method works well that's one percent of the characters you're going to need to learn right so then 99 percent of them are going to be learned with a method and a system that will be much faster. So, um, so as you moved, as you moved on and continue to, to use it, how, how quickly do you feel, you know, you're arriving on a new make a movie page 
and you're going to start learning a character, uh, how quick is the process now? Like, you know, from uh, the point where you put all the pieces together and then come up with a, a scene to remember the character, how, how long does that take you? Just from watching the first video on the make a movie and going from there, you mean? Well, let's say, let's say, you know, maybe if there's no video, you just arrive and you just do to just to do okay. the process. How long does it take you? Just, just to get a basic understanding of the character. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, probably less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Character. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. And that'll, that'll only continue to get faster as you move forward. Cause you know, what I found is that, uh, you know, it's funny. People will sometimes say to Luke and I, like, you guys are so good at this. And it's like, well, yeah, we did it over 3000 times, you know, at least. So it's like, you'll get good at anything yeah. if you do it 3000 times. It's like, you just think, cause it's mostly about relaxing. It's about just saying, okay, I've arrived at this uh, new character and every element of the character, I can relate to something I already know. And if you just relax into that and just go, okay, well, we've got a, a spoon and we've got a, a giant spider and we have the keyword is, um, you know, to uh, poke or something, you know, it's like, okay, so the giant spider is taking a spoon and he's, he's, he's poking me in the eye or whatever, you know, something, it's just, it takes, it's not, it's not really all that hard. It just, it, people can sort mm -hmm. of, um, it's easy to overthink. So if you're in that sort of beta wave, super, you know, uh, you know, putting a lot of the analytical uh, thinking, it can sometimes hold you back, but if you just relax into it, it can be pretty easy. Um, yeah, cool. Right. So, so as you moved forward, so you're in level 17 now. So that means that you've now been uh -huh. doing about five levels or so that have, uh, that are putting together characters to create um, sentences. So what's that experience yes. been like? Well, I, I kind of have had experience with that already mm -hmm. because I've been reading the uh, Mandarin Companion storybooks, oh, which great. are very good resources. Um, so some of the sentences I, I read them, I'm like, oh yeah, I already know that. I can recognize that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also learning new grammar rules that I haven't picked up on before. So it's it's been a good experience and I feel like I'm learning with it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, so like, yeah, so you've done some of the grammar point lessons. Those are relatively new. Well, um, have those uh, been helpful? Yeah. Uh, yes, they have. Um, there's things that I haven't picked up on on my own through my own studies with the grammar that you guys have made apparent. For example, the uh, differences between Bugua and Danshu mm -hmm. and uh, Kui or mm -hmm. Kusher, yeah, and those yeah. kind of things. Yeah, yeah, that type of stuff. It's, you know, it's, um, we, you know, as we always emphasize, the, you know, if you do it, actually, we just got a comment from one of our, um, one of our students, Christine where she said, I really like how this grammar lesson explained, you know, these sentences that I'd already seen because now they make more sense to me. And I was like, exactly. That's how it should go. It should always be like, you've seen the sentences and maybe you didn't totally get it, but you sort of, um, you know, went, okay, I can accept at least that this is the English translation and I'll move on. And then after you've seen like 10 or so sentences that are in a similar structure, then when somebody explains it to you, it's more like a light bulb going off as opposed to yeah. you know, if you've never seen any sentences with this structure and then I just introduce the concept, it's just sort of random and it doesn't have any kind of light bulb effect. It's just like, here's a bit of random right. conceptual information about how Chinese grammar works. And then here's some example sentences. It's not nearly as satisfying. And it also, I think it causes you to think too much because you're starting in the wrong, you're starting with the, the you're putting the cart before the horse. You're saying, okay, don't have any exposure to the language and then explain how it works. It's like, that's never how language is going to be uh, acquired. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're, you're finding those <laughs> useful. Um, yeah. Cool. It makes a lot of sense to me that way. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay. So as you've gone through, you know, have, um, have, have there been any impacts on, you know, how you've been, you know, obviously you're in the States, so you're not necessarily interacting with Chinese people on a day-to-day -day basis, right. but has there been any impact on your life so far uh, from uh, learning these characters or anything that you've done that sort of surprised yourself or kind of, um, you know, any, any interesting stories that you've picked up on since, uh, uh, you know, acquiring the levels one through 17 knowledge? Well, I was surprised that I've actually been putting more study time into 
my practice just because I find it to be so fun and so easy to get into the flow state, which I didn't expect. And it just kind of grew on me as I've done it more and more. And now I'll spend easily an hour a day studying, which wasn't quite my habit before. So that's mm -hmm. been surprising. And, and it's been a good thing. Right, right. Gotcha. Well, that's that. I mean, that's, that's good. I mean, if you, um, you know, study motivation, it's like, I learned a lot from learning Chinese. You know, when I was a kid, I did learn drums and I practiced every day on drums. And so I did oh, yeah. have that one thing that I had in my past that I was really passionate about. And for years, I just like practiced all the time. Um, and so I at least had that, that thing there, but you know, with Chinese, it just occurred to me, it was like, Oh, this is, you know, I'm never really going to stop doing this ever. I mean, obviously now I'm not practicing in the traditional sense. Like I don't feel like I'm sitting down uh -huh. to study. I just read Chinese, um, you know, throughout my day. Um, but it does that's make awesome. me improve and all that. And that's is eventually where everybody needs to get. But once I realized it was like, Oh, this is never, this is just something that's become a part of my life. It's integrated into my day to day. That, uh, is, you know, it's something I hope that I can trans uh, help transfer to other people to realize, you know, that's going to, um, that's going to be uh, the same type of, if people can get that attitude and they can feel like, okay, every day is going to be just a little bit better, just a bit, little bit better than yesterday, then, you know, I mean, like, it's only going to take, it, we're talking in like the less than five year time frame, which in the scope of your life is nothing like, and then the rest of your life, you have Chinese as a part of your, um, you know, uh, arsenal, I suppose, of skills. So uh, glad to hear that that's like that's great to hear as a as a curriculum creator knowing that you're feeling motivated to study is just like that's exactly mm -hmm. what we want so <laughs> fantastic um, yeah, you guys right. do a great job. oh thank you thank you um so tell me about your experience of the community aspect of the course so we have you know comments below all the videos we have the community oh. forum you know we have this thing where it's it's you know from our perspective from luke and i it's really great because we get to um have user generated content all over the place. So uh -huh. um, how has that been for you, you know, going through the course, seeing the other people who are on the course? Uh, it's been good. Um, sometimes when I'm stuck for an idea for a scene, I'll read the comments in the community and it jars something in my brain and gives me a good scene. Um, I've written down scenes on there too, and that helps me remember them better if I put them out on the uh, forum. Mm -hmm. And I've also asked you guys questions on the forum and found it helpful. You've gotten back to me very quick and answered my questions. So overall, that's been a good experience. Definitely adds to the program. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's been such a delight to us to see how that's developed because, you know, we're, we didn't have any idea that, that would happen. We, did, we hoped. We were like, all right, maybe people will comment and share their ideas. And then people really got into it, which is just, I mean, it's very, it's like heartwarming to me because the, nobody is doing it because they're basically doing it for other people. And I mean, obviously it helps them a little bit to write it down. Sure. Like you're, like you said, I mean, it helps them remember, but it's like, it's really great to see so many people sharing their, uh, their ideas. And I, like you said, oftentimes it's not that you use exactly their scene, but it gives you a little trigger to an idea. And yeah. And, uh, you can go from there. So that's fantastic. Um, so how about, um, you know, it sounds like you weren't particularly skeptical, but was there anything you were skeptical about at the beginning and sort of uh, kind of didn't really believe in terms of our uh, like claims or, you know, what the course was like? Um, if anything, I was just, I didn't expect much out of it. When I bought the course and started doing it, I thought, okay, I'll try it, but it's probably not going to be anything special or anything like that. Mm -hmm. That was the real skepticism I had just because it was something advertised on Facebook. Maybe mm -hmm. that made me a more biased, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah, other than that, it's gr It's probably the best course I found so far. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. So, how about uh, how we could improve the course? I'm, I've always, we're always trying to, you know, find ways to sharpen the saw and make it better. So, uh, is there anything that you've run across and thought like, ah, this should be, they could, they could do a better job with this, or, or you know, something, a feature that maybe you would like to have, or anything like that? Uh, yeah, there's a couple that I thought of. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can remember them all right now, but one thing I'm sure you guys have thought of it already too, but I think this should be expanded into learning other languages, hmm. um, maybe 
Asian languages such as Japanese, but really any language this could apply to. If right. you guys are looking to expand your company in that way, I think that would be a definite improvement. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a possibility in the cards. You know, I feel, I feel very passionate about Mandarin, uh, teaching Mandarin and, and teaching Chinese. So like we'll, we'll uh -huh. probably focus on expanding it to the point where we feel comfortable that anybody could use it to pass like the HSK six or something like that. Uh, but right. said, oh, I guess it's, now they just, they just made the HSK bigger. So the HSK nine, whatever it is, is going to be. Um, but uh, the still like with that, I have thought of this, you know, I think that because Mandarin Blueprint, hopefully is going to be, or, or I should say language blueprint, perhaps, um, is going to be right. something that we'll, you know, hopefully be doing for the rest of our lives. So then, you know, down the mm -hmm. road, I think expanding to other languages could be really cool. And it'd be good that we started with the hardest one. And then, well, at least, the yeah, hardest one, yeah. but, you know, um, I think it's probably not the hardest in reality, but, you know, it's, uh, it's right. Still, yeah. Uh, cool. All right. That, that's a good idea. Um, anything else? Um, I, I don't know if later in the course, if there's going to be a video material included. Um, yes. you mean in, in what way? Like, uh, um, watching like Chinese television or Chinese, uh, music videos or commercials or things like that to try and mm. make sure that you really grok the language. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, you know, we have um, in phase four, you'll see in a few levels coming up, we have some uh, original content that's graded to your level. But I was thinking about okay. this actually for, um, you know, once we get probably, to be honest, we probably wouldn't do this until even the advanced course, which you haven't made yet. So, but that is something that I would okay. love to do uh, in the advanced course, because um, that's obviously it's native language. It'll get you a lot of uh, spoken sort of turns of phrase and things like that. So I think that yeah, that's a great idea for supplemental material. I think there are actually some services that might do this. Uh, but you know, obviously, it's not anything. The power of Mandarin Blueprint is that anything that we do can be related back to the fact that we know exactly where you are and what you know. So we can say, okay, right. here's what they said here, you know, all these words, we know you haven't learned this word in the method. So we can give you a definition there, which is obviously other services, they can't uh, know what you know. So I mean, obviously, we don't know if people did stuff outside of Mandarin Blueprint, but still, it's like when it's an integrated system like that, it works It works pretty well. Um, nice. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, then my final question would just be, um, if you were, suppose you're talking to uh, somebody who wants to learn Mandarin and they say, you know, Paul, should I do Mandarin Blueprint? Uh, what would you, what would you say? I would say do that first before anything else. And I have recommended it to a few interested friends and recommend it to a few Dallas groups that I'm part of. Oh, excellent. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Paul. I, I, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, talk about or mention before we sign off for the day? Uh, no, just thank you for the interview and I'm happy to help you guys out. I'd like to see your company expand and I'm sure you will with how good the product is. I'm sure that you'll be, a big company in a few years. So well, we best sure, of luck. Really hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, Paul. Well, thank you. And uh, if anybody's interested in checking out more, just head to mandarinblueprint.com uh, to learn about everything that you can use to learn Mandarin through the Mandarin Blueprint method. So uh, thanks so much. And we'll see you guys next you. time. Bye bye. 谢谢你观看我们的这个视频 If you found this video valuable and you'd like us to help you reach fluency and literacy in Mandarin Chinese as fast as possible without all the headache of traditional learning methods, just head to mandarinblueprint.com to learn more. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell below to be notified every time we release a new video. And of course, 保重!